Have you ever noticed how some people don't appear to eat right or work out, but still look in better shape than many people who do prioritise a healthy lifestyle? Despite how unfair that might seem, a large part of it comes down to the body type we're born with. Consequently today, we will give you a better insight into your body type and discuss whether eating according to it will assist you with better weight loss outcomes, given that there's much talk online about this. But first, as always, please take note of a disclaimer. In the 1940s, an American psychologist by the name of William Herbert Sheldon described how from person to person we vary in body shape, or as how he termed it, somatotype. There are three primary ones, ectomorphs, endomorphs, and mesomorphs. Ectomorphs are characterized by having long limbs, narrower bones and skeletal frames, and smaller muscle bellies but larger tendons. Additionally, this somatotype is said to have the fastest running metabolism. As a result, ectomorphs are inclined to have naturally low levels of muscle and fat stores. Examples of famous ectomorphs include Brad Pitt, John Jones, Kendall Jenner and Kate Moss. Endomorphs, on the other hand, have a large bone structure, a wide waist, short limbs and more of a muscle belly than ectomorphs. Unlike them though, endomorphs have the slowest metabolism of the tree. As such, this body type is a lot more prone to fat storage than the others. Examples of endomorphs are Kim Kardashian, Jennifer Lopez, Chris Pratt and Jonah Hill. And then we have mesomorphs, the body type we alluded to at the onset of the video, who can generally look in good shape without the need for exercise or nutrition. These people are genetically predisposed to build muscle and not to store fat, have wide shoulders but a narrow waist, and have a visually optimal muscle to tendon length relationship. And examples here would be The Rock, Halle Berry, Jason Momoa and Gal Gadot. Nevertheless, in reality, you're never strictly one somatotype. Instead, you're a mix, but primarily one over the other. For example, you may be a 74% ectomorph and a 26% mesomorph, or 55% endomorph and 45% ectomorph. You're just classed as whatever somatotype you are most. Of course, sometimes it can be hard to distinguish which exact category you fall within, like if you're something approximating 50-50 between two somatotypes, but by and large we get a good idea. It's also worth pointing out that since somatotypes are largely based on bone length, bone structure and muscle to tendon length relationships, you won't be able to change yours no matter how hard you diet or exercise. Doing certain sports at a young age indeed impacts the development of your skeleton, but on the whole this remains stable in adulthood. That's not to say ectomorphs or endomorphs can't achieve impressive physiques though, and that you're forever stuck with a slim or bulky body type. It just speaks to the fact that there are limits. Take a slim ectomorph for example, who becomes a bodybuilder. Regardless of whether they might have gained a very high level of muscle mass and a low body fat percentage from years of exercising and eating right, and could even appear as a mesomorph at first glance, they'll still be classified as an ectomorph from having the same skeletal features. Accordingly, compared to a mesomorph with comparable muscle and body fat levels, they'll remain slimmer. In other words, someone's somatotype is what their body is naturally. Apart from that, somatotype limitations also explain why many can't achieve the physique of their favourite celebrity. Those who idolise Kim Kardashian's endomorphic physique, for instance, will never be able to achieve it no matter what they try if they're predominantly an ectomorph. By the same token though, Kim Kardashian would never be able to look like a traditional model like her sister Kendall Jenner since models are largely ectomorphs. Furthermore, William didn't just stop at using somatotypes to describe variations in anatomy. He actually went as far to propose that this influenced things psychologically as well. Ectomorphs were considered intelligent, gentle and calm, but self-conscious, introverted and anxious. Mesomorphs competitive, extroverted and tough. And endomorphs outgoing, friendly, happy and laid back, but also lazy and selfish but this idea has since been dismissed as being incorrect. Nevertheless, somatotypes pertaining to strictly body type are still in use in the field of physical education today. 
Next, another body type classification is pear and apple body types, or by their scientific names, gynoid and android, respectively. Well, this relates to the distribution of fat concerning health. An apple body shape is when fat is primarily stored in the midsection and less so around the hips and thighs. Conversely, a pear body shape is the opposite. Accordingly, since the fat in the midsection, i.e. visceral fat, is the most dangerous type of fat because it releases toxins so close to our organs, apple body shapes are associated with higher health risks than pear ones, such as high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes and high cholesterol. While both men and women can be apple or pear shaped, the apple body type is more common among men and the pear among women. Finally, you may have also heard of the female body referred to as things like hourglass, triangle, inverted triangle, rectangular, diamond and oval. These terms are mainly used in the fashion industry rather than the health sector. Okay, now that we've touched on the different categories of body type and given you more insight into which may suit you best, should you eat according to it? Well, online, the eating for your body type recommendations for weight loss relate to somatotypes, rather than the other body type classification for the distribution of fat or fashion. In theory, this could make sense. As one example, the American Council on Exercise suggests that endomorphs are more sensitive to carbohydrates than the other somatotypes, meaning the likelihood of carbs being converted to fat is higher for them. Subsequently, it might seem logical that an endomorph should have fewer carbs daily when trying to lose weight. Yet there's no evidence-based guidelines on what the proportions of protein, carbs and dietary fat should look like when on a weight loss diet. For specifically endomorphs or mesomorphs and ectomorphs alike. The only instructions for them seem to come from people selling diet plans. So it's not a stretch to say that there may be a conflict of interest. Therefore, we do not recommend undertaking any eating for your body type diet for weight loss. Although if you would like an evidence-based and results-backed program, look no further. Please click the link in the top right hand corner of the video or follow the link in the description. What body type resonated with you best? We'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below. So that has been our video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.